Um, so welcome those of you who are here. That song is by Chandler Moore. Um, it's from the album entitled Feelings. The song is Lean On You. Um, love that whole, you know, I mean, <laughs> that's a ministry album. And, you know, if you feel in the type of way, I'm telling you, it'll help you be able to express and pour and release. And so um, I honor the man of God and his gift as well in Jesus name. Um, so welcome to those of you who are here tonight. Blessings to you, Lady Shalanda, as well. Um, those of you who will listen to this on the replay, every new subscriber, welcome, welcome. Followers um, that are new, those of you who just happen to stroll on by, welcome, welcome. I don't believe you're here by accident. And so we are excited tonight. Um, to release the word of father because i just get excited when he's talking <laughs> you know what i'm saying when you love somebody you like enjoy hearing their voice you enjoy the sound of their voice you enjoy their expressions and when you come to know him my pleasure lady lot of pink um and so you know his personality and you know his um his laughter his joy and all those things i mean it's such a it's such um a gift you know that i absolutely appreciate blessings to you lady frenchy boggs much love to you woman of god and so um as well of those of all of you that are here i'm just grateful for your presence tonight and so um i wanted to be able to uh come on and release this word um i was done with this one uh february the 10th and it was about i believe it was 9 53 p.m but the uh, way that the letters from father work for those of you who might be new to this i just want to make sure we share with you that information um is you know oftentimes he'll just download his heart and you know have you ever read like okay prime example when you read the book of proverbs you might read one chapter and it's like multiple different thoughts all in the same chapter sometimes when he's releasing a download there's times where you know it'll be a download and i'll connect one part with another part or whatever for multiple days but that's not how he wants to express he wants to express whatever there you know in that time and then just get it out to you and that is so significant because as we release these letters it might be you know the whole entire thing speaks to you or there may be a portion that speaks to you whatever the case may be i just encourage you and i also um am charged to challenge and help you develop and mature to make sure you, that you go to the father you know with the word that you receive that you believe that is for you to have him just confirm that and then in addition to that you know he can be able to give you more some of you it's going to be absolute total confirmation anyway and it's like oh i was just talking to the father about that or you know you just had those questions or things that you pondered in your heart and you'll be able to receive that answer and still yet go to him because it's so significant oftentimes there's further instructions that are involved and you know he doesn't always give me everything because he does i'm not the source <laughs> you know he is and so it's to promote relationship with him and that's what this whole you know love letters and that kind of thing is all about this month just to um to um reinvigorate your relationship with him and so tonight's letter is um has a lot to do hey happy birthday daddy girl welcome welcome happy birthday to you hey lady to neil robertson god bless you and so um with that um tonight's letter is don't beat yourself up and this one has um a lot of indication for kingdom connections kingdom partners kingdom love ordained love purpose partners destiny connection you know that um all that involved and so in restoration so whether this is somebody you know you are already married or somebody that you know you know that there was a definitely a covenant connection that father spoke to you regarding um a promise that kind of thing um that or a promise um that you received and so maybe there was some kind of connection and then maybe a disconnection or what have you this word may just very well be for you or someone that you know and so um i'm just gonna jump right in here again welcome and you know it's never too late to share because we want to 
be able um, to be a blessing to others and promote Father's word. Because, you know, if you've ever been going through anything, and I believe that many of you here are or have been, um, it's nothing like being able to hear a word in season that it speaks to exactly where you are. It's like, I needed that right in this moment, right in this moment, that is what I needed. And so for those of you who were on I think it was Wednesday night. And um, as he was speaking to me, um, like I was like, okay, do you want me to change the message? Because literally it was something that uh, he had just given to me. And I was like, are we switching it up? You know, I really want to hear from you. Um, Hallelujah. Okay. Yes, kind Father. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. You're worthy. All right. Um, so I guess we have the word for tomorrow night. <laughs> um, uh, it was on 210. Oh, well, happy belated birthday. You get to celebrate for the month. So happy birthday again. Blessings to you, O Timothy. Welcome, welcome. And if I missed you, um, you know, charge it to my head and not my heart. I love you. And I'm glad that you're here. You matter. I love you with the love of the Lord. So I'm just going to go ahead and tap in and just allow him to utilize us um, for him to do his thing, you know, um, and then then he'll take it from here. He'll take it from there. And so we'll go further. So again, this letter was released on February the 10th, 2021. So just two nights ago, and it was about 9.58 PM Central Standard Time when this one was concluded. And um, Father says, don't beat yourself up. Don't beat yourself up. You know, you might have been struggling, toiling, feeling like and rehashing and rehearsing. You know, I should have done this or maybe I should have done that. And what if this and what if that father says, don't beat yourself up. And for somebody um, he's saying right now that that may not have to do with something that is just specifically related to relationship or restoration. Um, it's something that you you have been like struggling with and you keep on, you know, recy recycling and rehearsing. And father says, stop, just stop. <laughs> Don't beat yourself up. You didn't get it wrong. You didn't get it wrong. Some things he's allowed to play out. Some things he, um, in, he didn't allow or afford for you to see, or, you know, maybe your divine discernment or Holy Ghost didn't kick in, but there, th that's for a reason. Some things that he allows so that they can play out the way that they do, because there's an ultimate work that he is attempting to do. And so um, he says, you didn't get it wrong. Um, and then for some of you, he's saying that he has allowed you to also enter into a time of resting. And so some of you are like, maybe if I should have did this, I could have did that. And, you know, maybe you just felt like exhausted or what have you. Um, but he had ordered rest for you for a particular time. And so um, he says that whatever happened, happened. There are things that maybe you could have done differently, but those who you are connected to, um, they need to come out of their ways. So this is not something that is on you and on you alone. Blessings to you, Lady LaDonna. Um, and so he says that, that they are needing to come out of their ways. And so father says he is going to use it all and work it all. Part of them needs to realize really what a wrong is, what an offense is, and that they weren't done wrong. And it's not for them to be mad at you. So for whomever that is for, he is telling you to free, <laughs> free your mind. The rest will follow. Um, he says to properly define an offense, what it is, and not to take it out on you when that person is sensitive or when they have a lot going on. You know, sometimes there have been like triggers and what have you. And he's saying that there is a process as he's already spoken, that he is working, that he is changing hearts this month, that he is doing a work on hearts where he is um, changing and challenging people's perspectives, um, you know, when he is dealing or he's sharing with me now, when somebody performs heart surgery, it's 
open heart surgery. You know, there's some things that are open. They're exposed to elements. You know, it's a time to be, you know, uh, careful. And at the same time, it can be a traumatic experience in the effort to be better, to be healed, you know, for something to function better or more properly. And so with that, you know, it may be more sensitive, but, you know, do you blame the doctor <laughs> for performing the surgery? You know, no, you know, they are there to, you know, to ultimately to a degree, either save your life, spare your life, or improve your quality of life. And so Father is saying, you know, it has to be properly identified whether or not it was a particular offense or, um, you know, damage or anything like that versus an attempt at healing and maybe some things that they need to strengthen, you know? And so with the example with heart surgery, there are some things that are, you know, um, impacted or where the heart may be impacted, but there are some other things that could have been done that they could have done to help improve their condition, you know, whether it's, you know, changing your diet, whether it's exercising, you know, there were some other things. And so, you know, it, it, Father is working on hearts. He's changing hearts. And as he is doing that, there are some things that are resurfacing, some things that are sensitive. And so it needs to be identified what is the source and what's going on. And so Father says they need to properly define who wronged them. And that was not you. They also only um, hurt behind some things, not just because of you, but because of the hurt that someone else had already caused. And so father is dealing with hurt or issues, not just recent. He is, he's going all the way back. This is the time where, you know, because of his love for this person that you're connected to, he wants to do an overhaul with their heart and completely not just bandage it, but he wants to do a complete and a, for some, <laughs> I feel it's going to be a heart transplant. You know, um, this, this time it's going to be such deep inner healing that it's not going to be something that resurfaces like that. And so um, father says that he allowed some of the things or whatever this interaction could have been um, because the person needs to be elevated and they need to grow from it. Um, he's challenging them um, to have to deal with some things and not to continue to overlook them because they're impeding on them in, you know, in more than one way. And father says, I love them too much to let them remain the same day, way they have been. And so father says also, um, you need to voice how you feel. This is going to take some wisdom, some discernment to allow Holy Spirit to help, you know, guide your words. Um, but you need to learn how to um, and challenge yourself to voice how you feel. Um, timing is important and that kind of thing. So again, let Father lead you. Um, whoever this interaction was with, they realized that it was not even something to be that upset about. <laughs> And so um, to a degree, there may be a level of embarrassment. Like, did they overreact? Did they take it too far? So there's that balance and those questions going on as well. Um, or to even take it out on you like that after they've come to review some things further. And Father says they, that he has spoken to them concerning you. I am your defender and this is my doing. They do have things that they are still dealing with, but they will come to appreciate how long suffering you are and loving you are in spite of. I will convict their heart because it is not for them to take it out on you like that and to appreciate your grace. Father is looking for you to operate and to walk in such grace to extend um, extend his heart to them and upon them. And if you've said too much already, then that's not the part that applies to you. <laughs> to you. Um, again, that's why we go to the father and there's that disclaimer that again, you know, when you are reading the word of the Lord, 
you know, maybe there is parts that will apply to you at one point or another. And then there are times, um, you know, maybe that's not the part that exactly pins point. So again, just go to our father. This is not saying to override previous instruction that you already received. Make sure you go to him, because especially when it applies to the promises of almighty God, you know, there can be such warfare that surrounds them. And there are some things that maybe you add onto your life. And even as it's a blessing, and it's really important that you keep and you maintain your disciplines and your time with our father so that you can keep that relationship, that streamlined, so that you can continue to hear and proceed. Because if or when warfare comes, you know, I was telling somebody in first Peter five and eight, it says, be sober, be vigilant for the adversary. The devil is always going roaring, uh, walking to and fro about seeking whom he may devour. Right. And so when it comes time for promise to take place, you may experience heightened warfare, confusion or anything like that. Or it may seem like an unfortunate happening that is like, where did that come from? And so he's looking for you to come to him so that he can give you a heads up, a download or what have you, and or to know how to move and operate. This is not something where you have to go through it blindly, but you have to intentionally tap in and spend time with our father in Jesus name. And so um, she said, my God, this is so me. And so um, with that, you know, in addition to that, when it has to do with promises and restoration, things are, can already be sensitive or triggering and that kind of thing. So it's going to be um, significantly important that you ask our father to guide you. Um, the other thing is when it has to deal with covenant, remember that he is the third strand in the cord that is not easily broken. And so you is essential that you involve him in the process. If you try to do it outside of him, especially if maybe they are not, or you don't know, or, you know, they are still working through things, then it's essential that you bring him and allow him to remain in the equation in Jesus name and make sure you stay in right alignment, you know, and your heart is right. And all that is so significant. The other thing with regards to promise, especially with things such as restoration, um, if you remember in the book of Revelations chapter number 12, it talks about the woman who is getting ready to give birth, right? And many of you, it's been time for you to birth your promise. And maybe you've already experienced this cycle um, before. And it like seemed like everything was going good. And then all out of the blue, it's like, where did that come from? And something happened, right? And so it's like, a, <laughs> if I could um, give you this, it's like sometimes there can be a scent or there's a knowing that, oh, she getting ready to give birth. You know, it's a look on their face. You know, you know, when certain things are about to take place, right? Well, the enemy oftentimes know there's a shift and what have you. And the Bible speaks in Revelation chapter number 12 that um, the enemy was just waiting, waiting for her to give birth in an attempt to steal um, what was to be, what was to proceed, you know? And so um, if I'm going to turn there really quickly, I'm in the message translation tonight. Um, and I'm going to go there really quickly. And it says in verse number four, it says the dragon. Oh, I'm going to start here with one flick of its tail. It knocked a third of the stars from the sky and dumped them on earth. It's talking about the enemy, Lucifer. And so it says the dragon crouched before the woman in childbirth poised to eat up the child when it came. So before the woman who was in childbirth, poised to eat up the child when it came and the woman gave birth to a son who will shepherd all nations with an iron rod, talking about Jesus. And um, her son was seized and placed safely before God on his throne. The, nonetheless, you know, the enemy was right there crouched waiting for it to happen. And so, you know, we have to be sober and be vigilant, be intentional and not just, you know, happy go lucky, assuming that there is no adversary. And so, um, you know, be on guards, beloved, be on guard in Jesus name. And so you almost have to be that much more careful, you know, with how you say things, how you phrase things, because the spirit of offense is real. And so, um, you know, blessings to you, Lady Tiffany. Uh, she said that would be her came out of nowhere. 
Right. And so, and especially right now, it seems like warfare has been heightened, especially, um, you know, those spirit of witchcraft has been heightened right now. And so um, we want to come against that in the name of Jesus. And then also you want to operate and you want to walk into where you can, you know, be able to discern when something ain't right. Know where your peace baseline is. And if something is disturbing your peace, that means, okay, let me go to Father, ask him, Holy Spirit, please reveal it to me. What do I need to say? What do I need to speak? What do I need to pray? And so Father is saying, um, operate and and um, they're going to come to appreciate your grace. You're going to respond as our Father will respond. That is your challenge, and that is our purpose on earth as well. You know, as we love God and we love people, so we extend His heart to others in Jesus' names. And in, in Jesus' name, um, Father says they need to heal and understand His expectations and um, understand father's expectations as well as their own and their actions that they are not typical or healthy and there's nothing that nothing that warrants them to go that far so this is um has to do with maybe someone who puts up guards or barriers and that kind of thing it's a coping mechanism or something that keeps them safe and so father that's the purpose why he is dealing with hearts in this hour right now and so he wants he's not um peeling back the covers or the curtains for you to just be like oh okay cool but this is to give you insight information revelation and answer so that you can also know how to pray in Jesus name. Um, thank you, Lady Cora, for coming on and um, updating. I will continue to keep you in prayer in Jesus name. In the name of Jesus, I do remember you. I think you came on the live actually on my birthday. And so I'm praying with and for you, Lady Cora, and I'm expecting um, our father to move on your behalf in Jesus name. Hallelujah. And so Father says that um, part of whoever you're encountering, um, they're upset because, you know, <laughs> they, um, it's a realization that to a degree they can't um, even be mad at you. And and also that father's not allowing them to leave. He's not allowing them to come out of the covenant. He's not letting them out of the word that was spoken um, or the promise. And Father says it is not his will for them to be with another. And so um, what he's reminding me of is um, the book of Jonah, which speaks about Jonah receiving a commandment. And Jonah was like, deuces, I'm good. I don't want because he, he told God, he was like, look, if you want me to speak to the people in Nineveh, I'm going to talk to them and then they're going to repent and then you're going to forgive them. And he was mad, like he wanted to stay mad. And so he didn't want to go and deliver a word, right? Because he knew that they would make the changes. And some people that maybe you have been, you've encountered or what have you, they're like, no, because they want to be mad or, you know, it. Um, maybe has fit, you know, uh, their scope of things or what have you. And it's like to, to come to you, they know that you're going to make the shifts or the changes or what have you. And so um, with that, uh, they, they, they wanted to be upset, but they can't, even be mad at you and father won't let them leave. He's not going to let them off the hook. Now, there are some people, let me say this, that some of you have been dealing with promises or restoration and you believe been believing father. And, um, you know, they have, um, maybe declined to do what was necessary or within the time that father allowed or allotted. And there are times when he will render a divine replacement. You know, Saul was cutting up and he was like, bet I already got somebody who's, a, who's better than you <laughs> that is getting ready to leave my people. And father has a way of being like, bet, you know, I got somebody better than you. You don't want to do what I'm talking about. You know, I'll get somebody else. This is not that situation. And so, um, I release that upon you in the name of Jesus, that you are able to identify and discern which one that he is telling you and that you will go to him so that he will confirm in the name of Jesus. And so um, some of you have been wondering if father would share some things with them um, 
concerning you because maybe, you know, conversation or communication has been hindered or, you know, gone completely. And Father is listening. He is listening. And, and that's the thing when something is covenant, you can trust that, you know, if the Holy Spirit is in the middle, he knows how to speak for you on your behalf. If you've been following me for a while, you know that one of the things that he revealed to me was when, you know, Joseph was getting ready to put Mary away. And he was like, look, yo, hold on. And the angel of the Lord visited him. And he, there was a change immediately, you know, he made the shift that very next morning. And so father says, pull on the covenant. If there has been one, if that has been spoken, if it has been established, established in Jesus name. And so, um, father says for some of you, it is going to, he is going to allow them to be made aware that he has been using you to help them in their healing process. Um, some of it was unintentional, but he's allowed that to happen. And, and for you and for, and for both of you to grow and to be stretched and to be strengthened. Father says, yes, daughter. Yes, my son. Absolutely. Father says you are good for them and you are the best for them. Everyone truly for them has told them this and will tell them such and they will know the true ones as they will confirm what I've spoken. Their expectations haven't been true. They've been safe measures as they were not trusting me. Father said that they've been in things with other people or more people that have hurt them and have made it more complicated and have made it more challenging. But Father says he is changing hearts in this hour. Father says, don't worry, my daughter. Don't worry, my son. I'm resetting them. I'm resetting them. Some of you have been trying to figure out what should you say? When do you say it? And Father says there is going to be a reset. And what you thought you were going to need to figure out what to say or what to respond to, that is not going to be the case. But keep your ear to him and he will release the instruction in Jesus name. Father says they will be ready to love you and do what they need to do. Some of you, you know, that is going to involve um, them making the actual commitment um, to honor you and to do right by you. But that's also why he's working on the hearts and the change of hearts. So it's not just a matter of you know, considering, is this what I want to do? They're going to be sure. Father says, they better acknowledge you and that will be soon. I'm dealing with their heart now. It's time for them to love you and to show and demonstrate their love for you and to care for you and take care of you. Father says for someone, they better acknowledge you for Valentine's Day whoever that is for. Father says he is your defense and your defender. He also wants you to know that they miss you and that he will keep you ever before them and on their mind. Only believe, daughter. They may be feeling guilty even right now as he is working on their heart in Jesus' name despite what has happened and or what happened in the past. This was um, a statement that was given by a woman of God. And she said that women were made from under the man's arm so they may protect you and from next to their heart that they may love you because I, the father, made them one out of one man for the purpose of marriage. You've heard it first in the spirit and you will marry despite what tradition says. I, the father, am going to honor my word. Again, that's the key. It's his word. So what has he spoken to you? Make sure you're standing on his word in Jesus name. And if there's any conditions, make sure you're aware of them and you're walking in that as well in Jesus name. Your marriage promise is still going to come to pass. 
going to come to pass. Father is working on you also. And in due time, you both must be ready. It shall come. It will come. So stop focusing on the time frame. Focus on what I need you to do to be ready. There may be some things Father wants to work in them as well. But he's qualified you. You got to be ready his way. So this is not something you're going to do your way. Yes, Father gave you the promise. The timing is up to him. Ultimately, it is up to me to release it. And it's going to come to pass. I'm going to honor you come into agreement until the end of your days for what I want to do for you at my appointed time. Stay in position. Father, I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you, kind Father, for your letter to us, for your love to us, for those who you are speaking to tonight in Jesus' name. Father, for those that you have given clarity to, this is insight, answers, information, confirmation. Father, I thank you that there is going to be a sense of relief and also release unto them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that their hearts have been stirred to seek you the more and really appreciate you and time with you, Father, and relationship, Father. And I pray that this would draw them closer to your heart to know that you will release to them the answers to the questions that they've had. You will provide the solutions to the problems they may have encountered, that you will, that they will see you as their help as well as their hope in Jesus' name, that they will lean on you like never before, understanding that they will not ever grow out of leaning on you and trusting in you and the necessity to do so in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I just thank you right now that you would find us um, in a place that you would be willing to share with us your your mind and your heart, your intentions, and even your ways, and even what you're up to in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, I speak peace to those hearts that this word is for tonight in the name of Jesus. I speak that their minds would be settled in the name of the Most High in Jesus' name. Father, and I just declare that your peace would overtake them right where they are, Father, that they would rest in you, that they would trust in you for that which you have spoken and that which you have said, Father, we come into agreement with your words tonight in the name of Jesus, that we will adhere, that we will um, operate in ways that honor you, that we will walk in uprightness and holiness and in righteousness, being in right standing with you because we've accepted it through the blood of the lamb and the finished work of Christ Jesus on the cross, and that we will remain in position, Father, for what you have in Jesus' name, that we will no longer double in Jesus' name. Father says, somebody, you need to repent. You need to repent. It's okay to be angry, but you on a whole nother level um, because you are frustrated with him because you feel like it should have happened by now. You're angry with him because he has not moved in your time frame. And Father says, you have to trust me. You have to trust me. There is no love without trust. And so if you tr if you don't trust me, how can you say that you love me? And that is the first commandment that you love me. And if you love me, one of the ways you express that is you trust that I know what's best for you. I know that it's difficult. I know that it's been challenging in the way I know that you've shed tears, but I have been right there with you. I have never left you. So, Father, on the behalf of whomever this is for, I ask that you would forgive us, Father, for being frustrated, for being angry, for coming off of our post, you know, because we've been in our feelings. I thank you, Father, that you love us in spite of, that you would even render this insight tonight for us to get our whole self together in Jesus' name. Father, I apologize even on behalf. I stand in the gap 
tonight asking that you would forgive us that and and we repent kind father of not trusting you that you know what's best for us father i know that you are um that you haven't left and so even when we have been weeping or crying because it seems like you know um it should have happened a long time ago and hope deferred has made the heart sick where they've been in a um in a place of um of being restless and you know feeling hopeless and helpless at at the hand of what should happen and some quite frankly um have struggled with the fact that people that seem like they haven't even been trying to do right things seem to be working out for them and they're watching others go on before them and it still hasn't happened for them and some of them have been waiting longer than others but father we trust in you that you know us best and so we come into agreement with your will your purpose and plan for our lives father and we um we accept your timing your time frame your timetable we will come out of the seat of thinking that we are god we will stop making an idol out of ourselves like we are the one who run in something we will take the calendar we will not make a, an idol out of, out of our calendar and it being something that we focus on more than we focus on you because we want to see it happen or where we're holding our breath not doing the other things that we need to do because we're waiting to see it happen because it's like low key, can we even trust you to do it because it's been so long? And Father, I thank you that you love us so much and you would know, you would know that the, the things that we battle with and that you would even give us that, re that word of knowledge, that revelation so that we can repent, so that we can be in right standing in the name of Jesus. And so Father, I thank you tonight, hallelujah, as we receive your forgiveness tonight for feeling like we know better than you about how this should go, when it should happen, how it should happen in Jesus name. And so we take ourselves off of the throne, Father, and we thank you as you are on the throne in Jesus name. And as we take our rest in you, I just see him, <laughs> he's standing up off of his throne right now. Hallelujah, he's like, finally, because if you chill, then I will operate. That's when I will begin to move. But when you think that you're God, I take my hands off of it. And so right now in the name of Jesus, please forgive us. We take our hands off of it. We give it to you. And I thank you, kind Father, that you are moving and that you are working. And we trust you and we trust your process. We trust how you were deciding to do it and the timing thereby in which you do. For you know what's best, Father. And so we thank you for your love, your kindness, your tender mercies, Father. We thank you that you love us and those that we are connected to in the name of Jesus. And you desire to do things as you do and so father with that as we come to a place of trust and abiding in you and abiding in your goodness your kindness and we are grateful and we give you glory and so father we come into agreement with your heart and we will not continue to beat ourselves up we will not keep toiling in our thoughts and in our minds, going back and forth, trying to think about what we could do differently, robbing ourselves of what is to come in Jesus' name. And so we'll stand in preparation ready. We will be sober. We will be vigilant in Jesus' name. We will also be um, aware. We will keep our eyes open, Father, in Jesus' name. We will begin to press into prayer like never before in the mighty name of Jesus, for that is where you will also give us insight, revelation as well, Father, so we will know what our part is and when. And we will not operate out of our own strength as we may have done in times past. And then we got in the way or we um, caused more friction that you had to deal with. And so, Father, I thank you tonight for your forgiveness and for your divine restoration in the mighty name of Jesus, as we call it done, according to your will, your purpose and plan. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and say amen and amen. Blessings to you, Lady Aisha. So glad to have you here tonight. Um, and so I honor our Father for those of you who are here in Jesus' name. Just know that he is touching hearts. He is changing hearts. And he's aligning all things up and even till this point um, to cause some things and hearts to be turned 
uh, the way he desires. Listen, the, the Bible says that the heart of the king is in his hands and he turns it whithersoever he will. The heart of the king is in his hand. Y'all be wanting to run around and be like, my king, my king, you know, um, for those women of God talking about, you know, your husband and father is saying, hallelujah, even as we are a royal priesthood and a chosen generation and all that, we are kings and priests even unto our God. And so he wants to remind you that the heart of the king is in his hand and he turns it whithersoever he will. So trust him to turn it as he desires to do so and when he desires to do it in the name of Jesus. And he will. He says, be careful that you do not create something out of your flesh in this time. You know, any Ishmael's or trying to remix it because you will only delay what he has desired to do. And so we desire that you have no more delay in your life in any way that you don't um, go out there, you know, venting, going off, having a moment or whatever for him to have to also undo. Walk in him and let him lead you and guide you in Jesus mighty name. Listen, this is the word that he is giving um, me to give you even right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter number um, 25, and this is, um, hmm, okay, let me give you some praise. Isaiah 25, I'm going to read this part, um, starting at verse number one. God, you are our God. We celebrate you. We praise you. You've done your share of miracle wonders well thought out plans, solid and sure. Come on, somebody. He's done it. He's done it. It's been well thought out. He's already made it happen in Jesus name. Listen, and then we're going to flip the script down here in Isaiah 25 verse number eight. And it says, and God will wipe the tears from every face. He'll remove every sign of disgrace. That's for somebody tonight. You need to know that he's going to wipe every tear from your face, from every face. And he's going to remove every sign of disgrace. So for those of you who have been embarrassed, you know, maybe somebody has said, you just can't keep a man. We break that word curse off of you right now in the name of Jesus. We cause those, call those words to fall to the ground and die in the mighty name of Jesus. They will no longer produce any fruit in your life in Jesus' mighty name. We curse those words from the root in the mighty name of Jesus. And in its place, we decree and declare in the name of Jesus that you will hallelujah walk in the faithfulness with the one that he has for you in the name of jesus and your relationship will thrive hallelujah the way father intended it to in jesus name and for those of you who have felt disgrace you felt disgrace either because of you know the breakup along your process or you felt disgrace because of um of a divorce or of a separation or you felt disgrace because maybe you shared things about your promise too early or maybe to the wrong people. And so you feel a type of way or you feel ashamed within yourself and or other people have questioned you or made you to feel a type of way because you shared it with them. I'm telling you tonight that the word of the Lord is telling you that he is gonna wipe the tears from every face and he's gonna remove every sign of disgrace. Once the promise is fulfilled in Jesus name, Hallelujah. It's going to remove all the shame, all the disgrace in the name of Jesus. And let me tell you this, that a promise spoken is a promise fulfilled in Jesus name. Hallelujah. He that is has promised is faithful. It says in Hebrews chapter number 10, verse number 23 in Jesus name. And so again, he'll remove every sign of disgrace from his people wherever they are. Yes, God says, oh, wherever you are, he's doing it in the name of Jesus. It says also at that time, people will say, look at what's happened. This is our God. We waited for him and he showed up. We waited for him and he showed up. I prophesy tonight in the name of Jesus that that shall be your declaration that you waited for him. Come on, somebody. And he showed up. Somebody put that in the chat. He showed up for me. Not only is he showing up for me, but I declare it in advance in a, in a past tense that he showed up for me because he's going to do it. I already know it. I'm just putting a praise on it right now. Hallelujah. That we waited for him and he showed up and saved us. Hallelujah. This is it, 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 it. I thought at 
at that time at that time people will say so they're making a prophetic declaration even in this word and i dare you to make the declaration tonight in the name of jesus kondo bosha hallelujah said this god the one we waited for so let's celebrate sing the joys of his salvation the one we waited for come on somebody god's hand rests on this mountain god's hand is resting upon you in the name of jesus and he's going to do hallelujah everything that he said that he was going to do in the name of jesus in jesus mighty name and, and so this word he says that something's going to be significant for somebody in the month of july in the month of july that is titled um um uh, something that i marked in here july 17 2020 he says a year from them hallelujah and so he's giving you advance notice whoever that word is for make sure you hit us and you release your testimony in jesus name and the and then so he says hallelujah to continue isaiah 26 um of uh, verse number one it says this in the message at that time this this song will be sung in the country of judah we have a strong city a salvation city let me skip ahead so good and true people can enter good and true people can enter that is why he is working on you and your character your integrity your heart your mind your emotions your will your heart hallelujah because this is something that people with who are good and true can enter people with their minds set on him hallelujah that you, he keeps completely whole steady on their feet because they keep at it and don't quit the father is telling you tonight to keep at it and don't quit in the name of jesus depend on god and keep at it because the lord god you have is a sure thing somebody want want to put that in the chat the lord my god is a sure thing he he is sure he is true come on somebody so i'm gonna keep at it and i'm not gonna quit he's too legit for me to quit you're too close to quit in jesus name listen it says in verse number seven and eight it says we're in no hurry god we're content to linger in the path signposted with your decisions what does that mean we're not trying to go ahead of you god we trust your timing we're content to linger in the path signposted with his decisions with his decision with his ruling with what he has spoken we want to linger in that i want to be in that space knowing that this is what he wants and the signs posted that means i got confirmation that this is the place where i'm supposed to be right now at this very moment in my life in jesus name it says who you are and what you've done are all we'll ever want he's looking for you to get to the place that he you're all i want you're all that i ever needed you know he's looking for you to have that heart for him listen so let's take me back to you is what the song says and so through the night my soul longs for you deep from within me my spirit reaches out to you when your decisions are on public display everyone learns how to live right can i tell you hallelujah that the lord's decisions are on public display and there is some things that you know you've been worried about being a secret you've been worried about you know um th th it was like so private that it was like was were you a secret he said that the thought his decisions god's decisions are going to be on public display listen when god does it there's no need to keep silent about it listen in jesus name and so trust in him trust in his timing and who and what he says that he is going to do in the mighty name of jesus so i release that upon those of you who are here tonight hallelujah your father is faithful and he's going to do everything that he said that he was going to do in the mighty name of jesus He's rendering great deliverance. Psalms 107, verse number one. Oh, thank God. He's so good. His love never runs out. Hallelujah. All of you set free by God. Tell the world. Hallelujah. Tell how he freed you from oppression. Somebody is having oppression broke on off of you right now in the name of Jesus. Let me prophesy in advance to you. According to the word of the Lord, it says, hallelujah. Then in your desperate condition, you called out to God. I ch I challenge you. Hallelujah. In your, in your condition where you are and, and and let me back it up a little bit verse 4 says some of you wandered for years in the desert you feel like you've been in this desert place for years they said looking for but not finding a good place to live a good place to be a good place to be settled the word of the lord said half starved and parched with thirst like you're tired you're exhausted it said you've been staggering and stumbling on the brink of exhaustion and some of you have been like unstable because you've been staggering and stumbling but the word of the lord says this then in your 
desperate condition you called out to God and he's been hearing you which is where these letters are coming from they're his response to the matters of your heart and it says here that in your desperate condition you called out to him and he got you out in the nick of time the Lord is going to get you out right in the nick of time and it says he put your feet on a wonderful road somebody he's putting my feet on a wonderful road it's up from here it's better from here I'm telling you it's coming in Jesus name in the nick of time that took you straight to a good place to live listen hallelujah when god does it it's going to be once and for all in the right in the name of jesus it's going to be once and for all so thank god for his marvelous love for his miracle mercy to the children that he loves listen his miracle mercy his mercy is going to be so overflowing it's even a miracle in and of itself but who is it for to the children that he loves to the children that he loves that's me <laughs> somebody better claim it i'm a child that he loves in jesus name i make sure i spend time with him hallelujah and he loves me with a special love not because i'm just so special but i make sure that i love on him and i become special listen hallelujah he's special to me come on somebody listen it says he poured out he poured great drops of water down parched throats the starved and hungry got plenty to eat your situation is changing hallelujah He's calling you out right in the nick of time in Jesus name. Hallelujah. You're about to have a change, a change, a change of uh, a change of what is he saying? A change of a change of confession the things that have been coming out of your mouth he says you're about to change your confession you're about to change your declaration and i want to release this to somebody in jesus name that he wants you to watch your words some of you have been speaking ill of the very thing that you desire and our father is saying listen life and death is in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat thereof of its fruit and so listen it's time for you to watch your mouth watch your mouth watch your mouth watch what you say in jesus mighty name so that father will honor it and it will be that what you desire to see so stop seeing or stop saying what you see if it's not what you want to keep producing instead say what you desire to see and then you'll begin to see what you've said in the name of jesus and so we release this upon you even this evening may you receive of the word of the lord and may it be done so unto you in jesus name Father, I thank you as we activate your word, hallelujah, even on another level, Father, I thank you that you go before us and you're carrying it out and we give you glory for all things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Listen, much love, beloved. Um, we've already released the word of the Lord. And so I just challenge you to press in tonight to the secret place. Speak to him hallelujah speak to him call upon him and take it to him and see what else he wants to release to you blessings to you lady carolyn believe him with you for a good report in the name of jesus hallelujah oh you already got it hallelujah she says thank you father for a good report on tuesday and today we give you glory hallelujah for breakthrough for those who are connected in jesus mighty name blessings to you lady renee um lady sharice as well as to you lady marina i'm telling you he is showing up for you he is is showing up right on time for you in Jesus name. I decree it and declare it. It is so and so it is. I believe him to be great. I believe him to be faithful and I expect to him for him to move in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Listen, if you don't follow me, make sure you follow me. Periscope, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, apps, YouTube, all at Lady Jeremiah. Listen, for those of you, um, if there's some confirmation that you receive, some of you, it's been exactly what you put in a, in, in a journal. It's been exactly what you asked him and you were in in your prayer closet when nobody else knew is something that maybe you were having a conversation about and it's like you know what was it tapped you know and you know and and so let me tell you this that there are those of you who i'm aware you're assigned to our voice in this season and i don't want you to miss your word so make sure you're following us and you have your notifications on i would challenge you to follow on more than one platform just in case something happens with the technology you will not miss it in jesus name i will not miss somebody say that in the chat i will not miss my god will not miss he's gonna come in right in the nick of time in jesus name and listen for those of you 
um, who would desire to sow in this word, you can do that at paypal.me forward slash Lady Jeremia or Venmo at Lady Jeremia or um, at Cash App is dollar sign M Mana One. I'm praying with you. I'm believing with you. And I know that he wouldn't say it if he was not doing it. Listen, oftentimes when he releases the word, it's already in motion. Hallelujah. In Jesus name, once it's released, it's definitely in motion. It's already taken place. There are times where he's releasing the word. That means, you know, it's not just his mind or his intention to do. Literally, there are times when it's already happening. And this is just the confirmation. I'm telling you, he is moving and hearts are being stirred. Hearts are being chained and our father will not miss. Some of you just need to linger a little bit longer where the sign parts are. Hallelujah. Where, where the sign posts are in Jesus name. Blessings to you, Lady Edvidge. Hallelujah. And so he will not miss. And therefore you will not miss. Hallelujah. You will have the instruction. You will have the insight. You will know what to say when it's time to say it in Jesus mighty name. You will be more than prepared. Your heart is being prepared and it's been pruned and it's been plucked and all that wonderful stuff. Listen, because those he loves, listen, those he loves, he's also had some time of chasing with you. And then there's those, you know, it wasn't punishment. It wasn't punishment, but it was about production. Listen, um, it talks about the vine, those who are producing fruit, those who he desired to produce more fruit. He will make sure he trims you so that you can continue to be productive. I'm telling you, we are probably at the branches. He is the vine. And I'm just, I, I trust him with even the pruning. I trust him because I understand that it's preparation for a great produce of harvest in Jesus name. And so that is my prayer that you get that revelation as well. Take your hands off of it and let him move. I saw daddy get up off the throne. Okay. You giving it to me, you taking your hands off of it. I'm already, uh, he's already at it in Jesus name. And he can go where you can't go. He can do what you cannot do. Cause some of you don't even know where to start, but he's encouraging me for you to trust him on tonight in Jesus mighty name and he will not miss in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Listen, I love you all. I'm grateful for your presence tonight. And for those of you um, who this word is for, and it's regarding um, restoration of marriage, covenant relationships, or what have you, he said for me to um, release this song tonight. So I'm excited to um, obey. <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you your day, it, it's upon you in Jesus mighty name. It's sooner than you think it's closer than you can imagine in Jesus name. And so I'm going to release this as we go 